Hello, I'm Benton County Sheriff Troy Heck. Violence in the workplace is a topic that none of us wish to think about. Unfortunately, the potential for violence in the workplace is something that's a modern reality for all of us. Knowing how to properly respond to threats and violence in the workplace could be the difference between life and death. Maintaining public safety is a top priority of the Benton County Sheriff's Office, and we have produced the videos in this workplace safety series to show you how to best respond to threats or violence in the workplace. We bring this training to you in the hopes that you never need to put into use the things you learn here, but knowing that one day these lessons could save the life of you or someone else. Thank you and be safe. You know, 10, 15 years ago, uh, I've been in county government now for about 20 years and you really wouldn't have to worry so much about this, but it seems like it's gotten worse and worse, especially since 9-11 that we've had to deal with these things. And it seems like government places where we work, or public places in general, they get hit quite a bit by these threats and other things, and so that's why we, we're going to do this today. When it comes to bomb threats, they fall into two categories. Either you have a hoax, which no bomb has been placed in the facility, but a lot of times it's meant to cause fear. Perhaps it is something that they are going to try to see how we react to something like that. You know, do we really take it seriously? Is this a potentially good target for somebody if we just are lackadaisical about it and don't do anything about it? Or there might actually be a bomb in the building, okay? There's a warning that in, there is an explosive device in our facility. It's an attempt maybe to minimize the personal injury. Maybe they could put more blame on us saying, well, we told you there was a bomb. You know, try to diffuse it, blame their, from being blamed themselves to, to make it us like it was our problem or that it was our fault. And so that might be the issue or they might really try to reduce the casualties as well. So those are the two types of threats. If you receive a bomb threat by phone, please stay calm. Silently alert another coworker that you have a problem. Have that coworker call security at 911. Notify your administrator or um, alert security if you're in the courts facility. Otherwise, call your supervisor, let them know so we can get the word out, and also call 911. If the telephone number appears on the telephone caller ID, please write that number down. A lot of our systems, because of the trunk system, we don't have that, but if you do have something like that, or let's say somehow they get it to a cell phone of yours, please write that number down. Don't act hostile. Try to get as much information as you can. That's really important. Write down the time and date of call exactly. Look, if you have to look at your cell phone for a second to get the exact time, that could be crucial when it comes to a trunk phone system, get, being able to trace the right call possibly. So make sure you write down the exact time you get it. Ask where the bomb will explode and when. Very simple question that would be really easy to forget, especially when you have a big facility. You know, and, and when we have multi-buildings like the county has right now, we have a, you know, the, the property management building, we have the main courthouse, we have the new courts facility, the sheriff's office, and the ho county highway. So ask them, where is the bomb and when will it explode? A very simple question that a lot of times people don't ask. And try to prolong the conversation as long as possible and refer to the bomb checklist that we'll be going over in just a little bit. Don't hang up your phone even if the caller does. Please keep that line open because especially in a trunk system that might be really valuable for us trying to trace that call if we continue to have an open line. So please don't hang up the phone. That's why you keep it open. Keep the line open. Don't use the line to call back out. Just keep your phone off the hook. Note any, st any distinguishing background noises. You know, are you hearing anything in the background? I do you hear a train. Okay, well that might know that there's no trains out here in this area. It might be more towards the St. Cloud area, perhaps. Do you hear other voices? Do you hear music? Does it sound like they're calling from a car? Does it sound like they are calling from like a store, like Coburn's or a Target, something like that? Does a caller have a specific accent? And that can be anything. It could be a farmer from the north end of the county, or it could be somebody that has a foreign accent, or it could be somebody that, you know, has a, a certain lisp or something like that. Do they, does anything have a specific, something that stands out when they're talking? Does a caller sound familiar with our facilities, whether it's the courthouse, the, the administration building, or whatever? Are they talking about specific areas? This could give a clue as to, have they come here before? Are they a regular customer of ours? Or maybe they are a past employee that's disgruntled, whatever. So do they sound familiar with our building and know some things maybe about the building that most people in the public don't know? 
Again, immediately contact your supervisor or manager if you get a, a threat by phone and try to complete that, uh, that threat list again. So what is on the check list for the bomb threats? Number one, again, a reminder, keep calm, okay? The majority of the time there's not going to be a bomb going off, so your best thing you can do is to keep calm, try to get as much information as possible. Don't put the caller on hold, don't transfer the line, keep that line open, don't hang up the phone, okay? Did you notice any number if you have caller ID? Okay, note the time received and try to get exact as possible as you can. Don't say, well, within the last five minutes because our facility could have received how many calls throughout the whole trunk system in five minutes, okay? When was the call terminated? How long, you know, when they hung up, how long was it? Write that, write that time down again because that might be able to assist us in IDing that call. Put down the exact words of the caller if you can remember it, okay? That could be real crucial as far as what part of a building that might be or a specific closet or something like that. Okay, uh, delay the caller. Ask them to repeat. Try to keep them on the line as long as possible. When is it set to explode? Ask them that. Where is it located? All right, again, you, real simple question, but it could be very helpful. What area? What type of bomb is it? Can you describe it for me? Is it hidden? Is it something that's out and open? Um, why are you placing the bomb here? Why? They might even tell you because it's for this cause or maybe because, you know, we didn't get that permit to them or whatever it might be, okay? And then try to get a description of the person as best you can over the phone, okay? Male, female, did they sound nervous? Did they sound young? Did they sound like they were old? Something like that, middle-aged. Did they have a rough voice? Was it a real kind of a, a refined voice? Did they have any type of an accent or any type of a speech impediment? Did the person use an, any type of unusual phrases? Phrases that maybe uh, might be slang to a certain culture or um, just doesn't really make sense in our com common English that we use, okay? So that might tell us a little bit about their background or a specific, you know, if, if people are going out giving information to people, hey, if you do something, do it in our cause, they might have certain slang that they use for it or, or phrases. So if you hear something like that that sticks out, please write it down. Did you recognize this voice? Is this a person that maybe you've dealt with? It's possible, you know? If so, who do you think it might be? Just because you put a name down doesn't mean that they're gonna be arrested, but at least it gives us an idea. You know what? It sounds like the guy from two weeks ago that got mad because he, I couldn't transfer his trailer because he didn't have the right signature or something like that. Who knows what it might be, but if anything comes to mind, write something down, let us know, okay? So, were there any background noises? Again, you know, it was there music? Was there a motor running? Did they seem like they were in a car? Were there bells, horns, aircraft? Whatever it might be, any other clues? Write it down if you could, and note their words as well. Okay, so if you do receive a bomb threat, okay, first thing, notify the switchboard at the county, also call 911, okay? If you're in the government center, or if you're at the uh, public works building, um, or the courts facility here, you have to dial a three to get out to call 911, so dial three, then 911. If you're at the sheriff's office or the jail, you have to dial nine, or if you're internal, obviously you can just dial zero and get our dispatch center, but make sure it goes through. So that's important, so you have to dial a three to get out, the same thing for 911. Um, the switchboard operator should send out an email notifying that there, hey, there has been a threat. Don't use cell phones or radios as they could set off a bomb. Nowadays, it doesn't take much. A lot of, a lot of them are remote control. Some of them are in person, but a lot of times uh, just using your cell phone. So if you have a cell phone, don't use it. You know, know at the time maybe, but don't try calling out because you don't want to set off the bomb. Proceed out of the building to a designated spot, okay? So if you're in the courts facility, 
you're going to go over to the sheriff's office situation room. If you're at the government center in the property management building, you're going to be going to the Foley City Hall. And if you're in public works, you're going to go out to your driveway by Highway 25. Hopefully the weather's not too inclement for you, but that's where you are supposed to go. If you have any questions on that, talk to your supervisors. Sometimes you might get an in-person bomb threat, so what do you do? Okay, if you have a duress alarm by your counter or something like that, activate it. Okay, that'll let us know that, hey, there's a problem, okay? Ask questions you remember from the checklist. Don't pull out your checklist and start asking questions, <laughs> but try to remember some of the things as best as possible, okay? Let the person leave as soon as possible, okay? If they come in, boom, don't try to confront them. Let them leave. It's not worth you don't know if they're armed, you don't know what, you don't know for sure if the bomb's on their person and if you aggravate them, they might set it off, whatever. So just let them leave as soon as possible. Call 911 in the switchboard. Report immediately to your supervisor as well that, hey, we've had this. Write down all the details as much as you can, description, person, clothing, direction, vehicle, that type of thing. Let's say you're at your desk and you don't have a duress alarm and you don't wanna, you know, tip off somebody that, hey, you're having a problem. In each of your areas that you work, do you have a code or some type of a symbol to let the others know that you're having a problem? How many of you have that? Okay, that's something to think about because if you are in a situation where, okay, you just said something to me, no one else could hear it, but yet you need to let others know that, hey, we got a problem here, somehow come up with a uh, uh, either a phrase maybe or do an action something like that whether it's crossing the back of your legs whether it might be whatever you know sometimes um, I teach a bus safety course and I say you know what tell them I need to get Lee on the radio Lee meaning Ellie for law enforcement that might be a possibility or hey can you have Lee come over here they don't know they might not know your supervisor is or isn't Lee you know in your case that might be a little different but I mean but that might be something real simple but hey I need Lee over here law enforcement but try to come up with a, something to let others know, hey, I've got a problem, if you don't have that duress alarm to, to notify us or to get help coming. So something to think about, okay? In writing bomb threat, okay? Don't handle the paper or the note any more than you have to, okay? Because it is evidence. We should be able to get some fingerprints off of it possibly. Whether they're writing it, they might be nervous. Um, if somebody's nervous when they're writing the note, we have a really good chance of getting some fingerprints off of it. So the less you touch it, the better, okay? Save the envelope, it's evidence just like the note is. Call 911 on the switchboard, let them know what's going on. Report it to your supervisor. Pretty simple, just try not to touch it. Don't throw it away, don't give it to somebody else. Oh, look at this and pass it around to 10 people. That's worthless to us then at that point. Only one person touch it. As soon as you see what it is, just leave it report it, we'll take care of it from there, okay? If you get a, receive a bomb threat by computer, um, please don't delete it. Um, you'd be amazed at how many times people get something on their phones or on their computers, and the first reaction is, oh, I gotta delete it and then report it to us. Well, what good does that do to us? It makes it a lot more work for us. So if something comes on the computer, do not delete it, please, okay? Don't shut the computer down. Sometimes shutting a computer down will close up programs, it'll sometimes delete it as well. So leave your computer up, just leave it as is. Call 911, notify your supervisor. And again, the biggest thing, don't shut it down. If it's on your phone, keep it on your phone, keep your phone open, let us come over there and take a look at it, that type of thing. So, so again, it could be in person, it could be over the phone, it could be by electronic means, whether it's a computer, your iPhone, or whatever it might be. So those are the bomb threats. What makes a package suspicious? Is there a general one thing catches all for a suspicious package? No, it doesn't. It could have excessive tape or string on it. It could be rigidy, bulky, lopsided or uneven. It could be protruding wires or metal. It could be a strange odor to it, wrong title with the wrong name, oily stains, discolorations or crystallization on paper. What do you think that might be caused by? Chemicals inside possibly, right? So you don't know, okay? Um, if the package arrived under unusual circumstances, sometimes it's like, well, why would they just bring that in personally? Why didn't it come UPS or the Postal Service or something like that? If a package is left unattended or is out of place, if it's handwritten or poorly typed addresses, maybe it's got excessive weight to it, uh, ticking sound, shows a city or state in the postmark that doesn't match the return address possibly, 
okay? Misspelling of common words. You can't always go by that, but sometimes if they come from a foreign country, perhaps, or they're not very fluent in English, you might have that as well, or they might not have a return address. So um, those are some things that might tip you off. Or if it comes totally unexpected, but yet looks really official that you normally never get something like that. This is from the United States Postal Service, and I use this because it's a really good example of some things that sticks out. When they say excessive packet or postage, you know, look at all the stamps that's on there. Um, one of them it says to the chief executive officer, well, if you got something like that for the county, would that kind of stick out a little bit? Usually it's going to be administrator or it's going to be the human resources or the sheriff or something like that, but really the county doesn't have a CEO, so that might stick out, you know. Um, if it says personal, you know, how many people write personal on there? Not too often. They might say don't, don't bend or fragile or something like that, but not too many people write personal. Um, there's no return address on there, so that might tip you off. Um, there's some oilage, leakage, and stuff like that. So those are some types of things you can look for. Um, it also could be that it just might be uh, a, a, like a knapsack, or not a, I mean, back in the day I called it knapsacks, but like backpacks for school. They might just leave that there, or just one of, the, one of those uh, wraparound um, that you can use on your belts, maybe they'll leave there. They might just leave that. So really, how do you know what it is? It's really your experience as far as being in that area. You should be able to know what looks right in your area and what doesn't look right, okay? And you think, well, I work on the third floor. It's a secure area. Well, do you ever have cleaning people that come through that you really don't know who they are because they're not county employees? But yet, is it possible while they're doing their cleaning that they could leave something there that could harm us? It could. It's possible. So that's something to keep in mind. Even though you're in a secure area, we still have people that are walking around doing cleaning, doing other things. You know, we have radio technicians all the time that come in and work at our dispatch center. Or we have computer people that come in that might be not county employees, but they have to come in to try to fix a problem. Any of those people, anytime, are actually coming into our area to compromise our security, and they might try something. You never know. We don't know who all these people are. So that's why if something looks out of place, even if it's in your secure area, there's still a chance it could be compromised. So just keep that in mind. If something doesn't look right, have it checked out. Okay? So what do you do? Don't touch it or move it. All right? That's the worst thing you can do. It might set it off. We're having problems in the St. Cloud area where kids or whoever is leaving, they're starting to leave MacGyver bombs out in the middle of the streets at 3 o'clock in the morning, hoping people pick it up, either open up the container or shake it or something like that, and that starts activating the chemicals in it. So don't open it, don't move it, don't touch it if you don't have to. Don't shake or empty the contents or anything like that because that could set off the reaction with the chemicals. Don't try to clean, adjust, or open the package. Just leave it as is. If something's out of the ordinary, just let, let it go. Don't use a cell phone, computer, or radio near the area if at all possible, just in case it is something electronic that could set it off. Call 911. Fire department will probably come check it out. The sheriff's office will come check it out or Foley PD, whoever, but get some help going. Evacuate and tell others to leave the area if it's at all possible, okay? Just get out of the area. We don't know what this is. Close the door behind you. Try to keep, whether it's a smell or something like that, try to keep that isolated in your area there. Wait for the first responders to arrive, okay? If you have been in contact with the package, stay away from others. Try to wash up with soap and water for 15 minutes if at all possible. If you're starting to have problems, seek medical help right away. Sometimes it might be a powder. Don't try to clean up the powder if you don't know what it is. Is it baking powder? Is it something worse? Is it, who knows what it is? Don't try to clean it up. If you can, put a piece of paper over it, get out of there. That's something you could do, but um, once you put something on it, don't remove it, okay? Leave the area, close the door, section off the area, tell people, get out, evacuate the area as soon as possible so you don't want people getting contaminated. If you, again, if you feel you've been contaminated, wash out with soap and water for at least 15 minutes. Uh, try not to touch your face, touch your eyes, mouth, or anything like that. And obviously, you'd be ingesting it, so you don't want that. So try to clean up. If you seek medical attention, if you think you need it, seek it right away. We'll get an ambulance. We'll get the fire department out there to start helping you get treated. Okay. Suspicious packages, it can be in any shape or size. Again, it can be anything. So that's why you really got to keep your guard up. Um, it could be as simple as an envelope, or it could be, a, you know, it could be all of a sudden there's a, a garbage can that normally is not there that something that the, that the office doesn't use or something like that. Call 911, notify the switchboard operator, okay? Um, but it's up to you. And, and again, in this day and age, it's probably not going to happen, but if it does, know what to do. 
stay calm, make sure you report it, don't ignore things, and just be on your guard at all times because it's real easy to be complacent and that's when bad things happen.